Did you know that a contact lens wearer has 5 to 10 times more risk to get a coronary infection compared to the general population? Did you know that 1 in 4 contact lens wearers get a coronary infection due to overnight wear or due to failing to wash and dry hands prior to handling lenses? Did you know that 8 in 10 daily disposable contact lens wearers get infection due to increased duration of wear? By the end of this podcast, you'll know the common causes for coronal infection, how to identify a coronal infection and what to do, and what to do to prevent a coronal infection. Contact lens-related infections still result in loss of sight. If we know more about them, we could prevent and save sight. For this, first I will give a brief introduction about coronal infections. Then, I'll be interviewing Professor Stephanie Watson, a coronal specialist and the head of the coronal research group at the University of Sydney SafeSight Institute, and the head of the coronal unit at the Sydney Eye Hospital, who is going to talk about how to identify a coronal infection and will give us some recommendations on how to prevent this infection. And later, we're going to explore the research on contact lenses and coronal infections. I am Maria Cabrera Aguas, a researcher at the University of Sydney SafeSight Institute. Welcome to the Sydney Eye Podcast. My hope is that this podcast can be the start of a project for us to explore topics related to eye health and a place to answer some common questions about eye conditions. With new knowledge, we improve people's lives by saving and optimizing sight. The pilot of this project consists of three podcasts. Today, in our first episode, we'll be talking about coronal infections and contact lenses. The second one will cover resistance to antibiotics in coronal infections. And the third one will cover coronal infection caused by herpes simplex virus, the leading cause of coronal blindness in developed countries. Today, we're going to talk about coronal infections. But, what is the cornea? And what is keratitis? We ask some people these questions, and these are the answers. Let's listen. Cornea is the white mass in the eyeball. I think the cornea is, is, is the part of the eye that is in front of the eye, the, the part that you can see, and the first part that you can touch. When you, if you touch your eyes, yeah, that will be the cornea, the one that is used to for the light to go into the eye. Cornea is something either in front of the eyes that covers the eyes or at the end, at the back of the eyes. Um, I'm not sure. It's either in front of the eyes or at the back of the eyes. I am not 100% sure what a cornea is, but I know it plays a vital part in your eye. I think it's a film inside your eye. Um, But like just before the iris, I think. And I think the cornea is the front part of your eye that lets the um, light and images go through. So the front covering part of your eye. I don't know what keratitis is, but it sounds like some sort of eye infection or some sort of disease with the eye. That you, okay, it's something related to eye and it could be an infection. Yeah, because I heard that it has like a, you need to consult the doctor if you have some symptoms of like a scratchy eye or if it's uh, like a weird colors in your eyes. So you need to go to the doctor. So I guess it's an infection. Keratitis, I've never heard of it. Um, It sounds like something that protects your eyes from outside um, stimulation. Um, It could be something that um, it's like a water veil or um, something along those lines. And I think keratitis is a abnormality, some sort of abnormal 
anything with your eye to do with keratin. So I think it's a either too much or too little keratin in the eye. And I think keratinite, keratitis, I don't know whether I'm mixing it up with keratinitis, but I think one of them is the curvature of the cornea and one is an infection of the cornea. I think keratitis is an infection of the cornea. Some people say that the cornea was something in front of the eye. Maybe the white ball that we see. Others didn't know. First, let's clarify what the cornea is not. The cornea is not the color part of the eye, that is the iris. The cornea is also not the white part of the eye, that is the sclera, the eye's wall. Both the iris and the sclera are important parts of the eye, but we'll discuss those another time. The cornea is the clear layer located in front of the eye, which covers the iris. The cornea's purpose is to protect the eye from the environment and to focus and guide the light that enters the eye. For these reasons, it is known as the window of the eye. Our respondents were also not sure what keratitis was, but noted that it sounded similar to keratin, which is found in the skin. Actually, the Greek root kera means horn. Keratin is found in the fingernails, the skin, and the horns of mammals. Initially, scientists believed the, that the cornea was made of keratin. Itis is a Greek suffix, which means disease especially marked by inflammation. As a result, keratitis means infection of the cornea. Later, it was discovered that keratin is not present in the cornea. However, this name for this disease remains. Corneal infection is the fifth cause of over overall blindness worldwide. In developed countries, like the United States and Australia, a corneal infection is viewed as a rare condition often related to the use of contact lens. Other reasons to get infection are eye trauma, prior eye surgery, or history of dry eye or blepharitis, which is the inflammation of the eyelids. Whereas in developing countries, for example in India, corneal infection has been associated with eye trauma during agricultural work. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi can cause infection in the cornea. Pseumonas aeruginosa, which is a bacterium, Fusarium, which is a fungus, and acantomiba, which is a parasite, have been associated with corneal infections related to the use of contact lens. Well, now let's talk with Professor Watson about corneal infections and contact lenses. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome. Thank you. Well, how often do you see patients with a corneal infection related to contact lenses in your clinical practice? Look, every week I see patients with corneal infection. Some of them are mild, but um, a good number end up admitted for um, intensive treatment to the hospital. In any week, there might be anywhere between two to five patients admitted to the hospital where I work with corneal infection. Okay, so what type of patient usually has this condition? Look, it's interesting. It really is a mix. Um, we have a lot of um, elderly patients. We also have a lot of young patients. It's the young patients that tend to be the contact lens wearers. Occasionally also we see children with um, corneal infection and this sometimes is from sleeping in contact lenses overnight, a type of contact lens called orthokeratology. Okay, so usually uh, do they have any ocular history or family history? Yeah, look, with the children, um, they often have a history of having another eye condition um, with the adults, it's, it's contact lens wear, and particularly if you swim in contact lenses, uh, if you don't handle them well, sometimes we see travellers, um, particularly backpackers, um, uh, who uh, are in sort of temporary accommodation and their contact lens solution may be in a car or not cared for properly. Um, also, people that wear their contact lenses in spas and showers. 
for the elderly patient, sometimes it can be that they've got blepharitis, which is a form of a, a lid condition where there's crusting and bacteria on the lids. Right. Um, so usually what symptoms do patients need to watch out for? Yeah, well, with the corneal infection, generally your vision gets blurred and your eye is red and sore. Um, patients are often also light sensitive. And particularly if, it's, if the um, symptoms keep worsening, that's a, that's a big warning sign. Very well. So why, uh, why do you think people uh, should um, care about the corneal infections when they wear contact lens? Look, it's important that people are mindful of it because, um, you know, if, if, um, if you're young or you're old, you know, your vision is very important. And if you have a contact lens related infection, you might not end up with the same vision you started with. Um, for some people, particularly those with good vision and only one eye, this can really have a big impact on their every day. But even for those who can see out of the other eye, reducing the vision in one eye still impacts their quality of life and ability to work. Also, there can be quite a bit of time taken off work and discomfort when the infection is being treated. Very well. So what, what are the treatments for, uh, for this infection? Usually how it, how it is treated? Yeah, look, the treatment is fairly intensive. Patients get um, topical antibiotic drops day and night for sort of two to three days. Uh, and then the drops continue just hourly during the day. Um, sometimes we also need to give them steroid drops under very specific circumstances uh, and sometimes antibiotics or treatments by mouth. Um, patients may need to be admitted to the hospital um, you know, to make sure the intense treatments can be given. Uh, and then after the initial infection is gone, we often need to follow up patients for some time to try to heal the ulcer that was created by the infection. And how long uh, do you give the, the antibiotics for? How many days or weeks? Or? Oh, well, usually we give the intense course. It'll be overnight for two days uh, and then sort of for a further three days uh, hourly during the day and then sort of tapering them off over sort of um, a week or two. Um, what are the potential complications from this infection? Yeah, you can get some, um, some terrible complications from corneal infection. Probably the worst is when um, the whole eye becomes infected and that's called endophthalmitis. And you can actually lose vision or even the eye from endophthalmitis. Sometimes the infection can even spread further than the eye itself into the tissues around the eye. And this can cause what we call an orbital cellulitis. Um, this again can result in loss of vision or even the eye and sometimes the patient can become sick with septicemia. Uh, more locally, the cornea can weaken um, and have what we call a perforation where the contents of the eye can leak out. Um, this is also a serious um, complication. Scarring can result, ulcers that can take time to heal, and even the effects of treatment may produce some toxicity and discomfort for the eye. After the ulcer is healed, when can the patients wear the contact lenses again? Look, before we, let them, before we advise them to wear contact lenses again, we have a, a good talk to them about the importance of hygiene, uh, avoiding sleeping in contact lenses, which increases the risk, uh, avoiding swimming. Um, and then we would sort of wait for the ulcer to heal and the scar to settle. And maybe, you know, within a month or so, they could resume wearing the contact lenses, but being very mindful of the risks involved. Very well. Uh, well, perhaps to conclude today, uh, summer is coming in Australia when we tend to spend more time outdoors. What do you recommend contact lens wearers to do to prevent a corneal infection? Okay, well, sometimes it's easy when you're outdoors to, you know, to swim in the contact lenses. It's best to avoid this. If you're going to be out late and, and um, the contact lenses are going to be in for a long period of time, take some glasses with you so you can take them out, but using good hygiene when you do. Always wash your hands at the sink and remember to dry them because some of the infections uh, occur from waterborne organisms. Avoid being in the contact lenses um, in spas and saunas. If you're showering, again, take them out. Be careful and don't overwear them. Well, Professor Watson, thank you so much for being on our first episode today. Thank you. No, it's been um, great to be part. Thanks again. Thank you.
more on coronal infection and contact lenses up next. But first, we have a question for you, the listeners. As a contact lens wearer, what do you do to prevent eye infections? Email us at seedipodcast at gmail.com or share on Twitter with the hashtag seedipod. That's hashtag S-Y-D-E-Y-E-P-O-D. Between 2012 and 2016, we studied patients admitted at the Sydney Eye Hospital with a corneal infection. What we found was 1,052 cases of corneal infections and nearly 9 out of 10 cases had at least one reason for having a corneal infection, with the most common reason being contact lens wear, which accounted for two-thirds of the cases. This confirmed that Contact lens wearing is a very common reason for corneal infections in developed countries. The infection was mainly associated with regularly replaced lenses, for example, weekly, fortnightly, or monthly, monthly basis, in 5 out of 10 cases, and daily disposable contact lenses in 2 out of 10 cases. Water sport related activities, for example, swimming or rowing, Showering or sleeping with the contact lenses were the most common reasons to get the infection. Traveling to tropical areas has been also attributed to corneal infections in contact lens wearers. In this study, we found 26 cases which had noted travel overseas before their corneal infection. These patients were contact lens wearers in their early 30s, had mainly traveled to Southeast Asia, specifically Thailand and Indonesia, and their infections were related to a bacterium called Staphylococci. This was a crucial finding, as typically a different bacterium called Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a more common cause of contact lens-related corneal infection. Although we cannot currently travel overseas due to COVID restrictions, we can still travel to tropical regions in Australia, so it is important to remember this. In summary, a corneal infection is more common in people wearing contact lenses in their early 30s and is often caused by a bacterium called Pseudomonas aeruginosa in developed countries. Other reasons for corneal infections are eye trauma, prior eye surgery, and a history of dry eye or blepharitis. In developing countries, the common the most common reason is eye trauma during agricultural work. Symptoms include red and sore eye, blurring vision, sensitivity to light, tearing, or discharge. You can also see an ulcer in your cornea. Complications include loss of vision, scarring, infection of the whole eye, which is called endophthalmitis, corneal perforation, or loss of the eye in severe cases. To prevent a corneal infection, please avoid wearing the contact lenses overnight and avoid swimming or wearing the contact lenses in spas and showers. Also, wash your hands at the sink and dry them well prior to handling lenses. If you are a contact lens wearer with these symptoms, please seek an eye doctor as soon as possible to get checked and receive an adequate antibiotic therapy to avoid these serious complications. We are finding out more about why these infections occur and have some ways to treat them, but complications still occur. For the future, we will need research to find better ways to prevent infection and preserve vision if infection occurs. I'm Maria Cabrera Aguas. Thanks for joining me today in the first episode of the Sydney Eye Podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please send them to sidipodcast at gmail.com and connect with us on Twitter at Cabrera Marie. It's C-A-B-R-E-R-A-M-A-R-I-E or at Cornell Research or at Prof. S. Watson using the hashtag S-Y-D-E-Y-E-P-O-D. Until next time, bye!